To get a good start in a race, you must have precise timing in order to cross the line at the right moment, be maneuverable during the start procedure, take currents into account, pay attention to wind changes, and deal with the problem of finding a place on the line. It's all about compromise, managing all the different parameters at the same time, and managing the countdown, all of which can be learned during training. Five minutes before the start, the class flag is hoisted, and a sound signal is given. This is the warning signal. At four minutes, a second sound signal is given, and one or two flags, defining the last minute rules, are hoisted. These are the P, I, Z, Z and I, and black flags. And this is called the preparatory signal. One minute before the start, the flags are lowered, and a third, longer sound signal is given. This is the one minute signal. At the start, the class flag is lowered and another signal is sounded. During this procedure, if the P flag is hoisted, you can be over the line and return to the pre-start side before crossing the line again. If the I flag is hoisted as or with the preparatory signal, and you or your boat have crossed the line even partially during the minute preceding the start, you must go round the committee boat or the buoy end before recrossing the line. If the Z flag has been hoisted and you're inside the triangle formed by the ends of the start line and the first buoy during the minute preceding the start, you must return to the pre-start side and cross the line again. You'll incur a 20% scoring penalty even if the race is restarted, resailed or rescheduled, but not if it's postponed or abandoned. If the black flag has been hoisted before, with or as the preparatory signal, and you're in the triangle formed by the ends of the start line and the first buoy during the minute preceding the start, you'll be disqualified. Except if the race is postponed or abandoned before the start signal, which is quite rare. If the I and Z flags have been hoisted with or as the preparatory signal and you're in the triangle formed by the ends of the line and the first mark during the minute preceding the start, you must round the committee boat or the buoy end before recrossing the line and you'll incur a 20% scoring penalty. Positioning on the line is very important, but it is however forbidden to sail down the line getting in the way of the other boats. Moreover, yellow to windward has no rights over white and will have to pass astern of him and keep clear. Yellow arriving on port must give way to the white boats. He'll try to position himself at the last minute and take advantage of a space on the line. In general, you must try to keep a space to leeward, even if this means luffing the boat to windward of you, so as to have room to pick up speed in the final seconds. You must always avoid contact, of course, and give your competitors space and time to keep clear, even if they don't have any rights. On a long line, a belly often forms, because the competitors are worried about being too close to the line and line up one behind the other. If you have been able to find a landmark aligned with the start line, now's the time to take your chance and move into this unexpected space. Should you start at the committee boat end or at the buoy end? To work out which end of the line is favourable, the only parameter to be taken into account is the angle between the average wind direction and the bearing of the start line. But what influence does the placing of the first buoy have? Imagine a first case. 
The line is perpendicular to the wind direction. The buoy is in a central position. In this case, there's no advantage in leaving from either the left or the right. The three catamarans have the same distance to cover. Imagine a second case. The line is perpendicular to the wind direction. The buoy is offset to the left of the course. If we take into account the possible routes to windward, 45 degrees, and we accept that all the boats sail similarly to windward, we can see that A and B have exactly the same distance to cover. Now look at a third case. The buoy is in a central position, the wind has shifted to the left, and the possible routes have turned in the same direction. This time green will have a shorter distance to cover if it starts from the buoy end. In this fourth case, the buoy is offset to the right of the course and the wind is blowing from the left side of the line. Even though the buoy appears to be closer to the committee boat, insofar as the possible routes are related to the wind direction with respect to the line, the boat which starts at the buoy end will have the advantage of covering a shorter distance. In conclusion, the deciding factor is the angle between the start line and the wind direction. In theory, the start line is laid so as to be perpendicular to the wind direction, but most of the time one of the two ends is favoured. We've seen earlier that the deciding factor when deciding which end of the line to start from is the wind direction with respect to a line perpendicular to the start line. We'll have a look now at how to determine the bearings of the line and the wind direction. First of all, we sail a leg close hauled and note the compass heading. Here it's 335 degrees. We tack and note the new course. Here it's 245 degrees. By taking the average of these values, we obtain the average wind direction, 290 degrees in this case. All that remains is to determine the bearing of the committee boat from the buoy. To do this, sail along their alignment and note the compass heading, in this case 220 degrees. The line should have been laid at 200 degrees, and it's at 220 degrees. The wind is blowing from the left of a line perpendicular to the start line, and the buoy end is favoured. A simpler but less precise method is to position yourself head to wind on the line and note which direction the boat points in. If it points towards the buoy, you should start at the buoy end. If it points towards the committee boat, the committee boat end is favoured. It's a good thing to talk about strategy before the start, to know where you'll be going, to decide on a start plan. Without a plan it's very bad. I have a tactic which may not be the best, but if you're in a top-class race, it's important to sail in clear air. It's important not to be bothered by others when you start. If you start in the middle of the line, it's always more difficult to get some clear air. If there's a problem at the start, Another boat will quickly come and mask you, which doesn't leave you with many options. I prefer the end of the line, because even if neither side of the line is advantaged, you can always change tack if you're close to the committee boat or to the buoy, or if someone's masking you, you can go and find some clear air. That limits the chances of getting a bad start. In a regatta with lots of boats, it's better not to take a midline start, even though it could be the perfect start. Someone else might cause you problems. At the center of the line, people generally tend to overestimate the room they have. 
They think they're too windward in relation to the line. Conversely, at the ends, at the boy leeward and at the committee boat, it's always fairly tight. You should always have some water leeward to be able to bear away and accelerate, because if you get closed in and have no water leeward, you're almost obliged to head the wind. You lose speed and the boats running downwind very quickly take a 50 to 100 meter lead. In catamaran racing, there are really two starting styles. The light wind start and the strong wind start. When there's really no point being on the line, because on the line it can be difficult to get away quickly. Especially when it's windy, a lot of parasites come along and get into the free spaces. So really you have to be careful of that. Starts are often complicated in a breeze when you're stationary on the line. You have a slight disadvantage compared to boats that get a five-second running start and cross the line on the gun. But most of all, you suffer from people arriving from nowhere. When someone gets in here and who's already moving, as soon as he overlaps, you don't have right of way. So you can bear away. The little space you made for yourself to start isn't there anymore. So not only does that hinder you start, you're also next to a guy who's running and who has right of way. So if there are two of you on the trapeze, it's better to control your speed as you approach the start line. And then, when you're still quite far out, not 500 meters, but 40 to 50 meters, you pick your gap or someone who's in a bad position and pass just below him. You're in this zone here. When you are here, if the zone is neutral, there's no preference right or left. You put yourself about here during the minutes. If you get going from here or from here, you can cross here or there with the people in the zone. What you need when you're here during the minutes is a period of observation to decide where you will be aiming for. As you get going, the timing between the crewman and the houseman must be very good. The crewman gives the time constantly, minus 40 seconds, minus 30 seconds, and also the lateral space you have here. For a light wind start, as it's very difficult to position yourself where you want, you really have to be on the line, at least by the last minute. That's a minimum. You know, it will be difficult to move, and during the minutes, you won't be able to get here and here. As the line is long, you have to be in position on the line already. There you can defend your gap, because you can see people coming. It's easier. You must have your place on the line, because when you're in the light wind, and there's a wall of boats in front of you, it's very hard to move around behind them. Uh, how do you stop altogether? To stop, you turn windward and sheet out your sails. The crewman can really be of help at the start, because the boats aren't usually facing the wind and are therefore still moving. You turn to face the wind, and when the boats start to move backwards, the crewman puts the jib sail aback. The hamsman repositions like this and recenters. You have to learn to stay still. At the start, you're on the line. If you stay at 45 degrees, nothing happens. Well, it does, but after some time. At minus 10 seconds, the boat must begin to rotate. That doesn't mean that you bear away on the line. You have to make the boat pivot like this. 9, 8, 7, 5. At 5, you sheet the sails and get going. You must not move forward while orienting the boat. It's not allowed. Being on the line, when there are boats around, is strictly forbidden. You simply orient the boat. 
To do this, I fully open the traveler and ease out the mainsail completely. That's the only way to get the boat to turn. You leave the jib sail full and the boat turns automatically. You mustn't do it too early, otherwise at some point the boat will start to move forward. You must open completely, get the boat to pivot, put it at 60 degrees, that's enough, and time everything properly. Then we shin in gradually as we move ahead. At minus 15 seconds, you are set as you would be for beating. You're not moving, you've got your sails all sheeted out, the jib sails flapping a bit and the main sails limp. At minus 10 seconds, you start this rotation simply by sheeting in the jib sail. Obviously, if there's a 4-3 blowing, you're going to start very quickly. If there's force 1, you can start sheeting in at 10 seconds. This is the starting zone. The coast is here. We know there is a particular coast effect. The wind is like this. And as we leave in this direction, the wind will veer to the left. Even if that looks good, even if the line is like this, what will happen when we start here is that the boats will do this. Even if this boat had an advantage, they'll end up behind. And when we change tack, we'll be way in front. Coastal effects like this are very common. So we don't play for two meters when we know there is a variation of five to ten degrees in this zone. Because here it will be a huge difference, it will be 200 meters. That's why it's always worthwhile taking a trip out before the regatta to see whether you have the same compass courses here as you do here. You know there's going to be a rotation to the left because of a local effect. So obviously you head off to the left and say toward the coast as fast as possible to get this header. The header then turns into an assisting wind and things start to get interesting. <laughs> 